This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm all right, ho. And you have made your way onto our close friends list. Because, darling, you don't put the juiciest gossip on your main story. You keep it. For your close friends. And that's exactly what these episodes are for, my lady, your grace. <laughs> I've been watching, Someone's been watching yeah, Bridgerton. I have. Why yeah. have they all talked like that? Mama. <laughs> 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 no, I was, don't say that. Okay, anyway, let's get into this. Oh, it's already started. Yeah. We're, we're in. On. I've got some hypothetical questions for you. Okay. I love these. Have you got an activity for me? Yeah, I've got, I've got two activities I for you. I always try to bring activities for you. Well, I've done my research this week. Can you go to the next slide for me, please, Ellie, so I can see these hypothetical questions? First of all, I read a book last week, or yeah. this week actually, that uh, you know how you have like the fight or flight mode? Yeah, they yeah, talk about yeah, fight yeah. or flight mode. If you're confronted with a situation, you either fight or you flight. And then a few years ago, I think they added freeze as well, like fight Flight or freeze. Say that really fast. Fight, flight, freeze. Fight, what? flight, or freeze. Fight, flight, freeze. Fight, flight, freeze. Anyway. <laughs> Sounds like sin. <laughs> <laughs> so I read this book and they were talking about this fourth one that I'd never heard of before and I think it fits me perfectly. So I'm going to give you a situation and I'm going to tell you how would you react. So let's say you've been kidnapped You've been kidnapped by someone and you are being held hostage in a way, in like Mm -hmm. a basement, you're like tied to a chair and he's like got a knife in his hand, let's just say. Yeah. Trigger warning. Anyway, what are you doing in that situation? Because there's four responses you could have. You could obviously fight back, kick him, break your, break your, you know, what are your, your, your cable ties, break the cable ties, punch him in the face, get him in the balls and try and escape. Mm -hmm. Um, Flight. Which I think is just run. run. Yeah. Um, Freeze, which is just obviously do nothing, or fawn. What's fawn? So fawn is this one that I read about in this book. And fawn is where you pretend you're like in love with Oh, that would be me for sure. Me too. That is mine. Well, there's so many things to consider here. Like maybe you consider fighting if it was just like the one guy and if you could suss out if you could fucking break his neck. Yeah. Um. (laughs) If he's like a bit weak, yeah. but if it's like some big guy, then obviously I'm not going to consider that at all. But I think I would go fawn. Right. And just try to make him fall in love with me. Me? Yeah. That is so me. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm tied up right now, but seeing as I am, we may as well, right? You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm like, if I was literally but tied if, up. I can, we can say that now, but I think like if you're in the situation, I don't think you would have the mental capacity to actually follow through with that. Surely. You'd be fucking panicking. Absolutely. But I think out of the four things, you'd try. I think that. I'm fawning first. Okay. Then I'm fighting. Then I'm flighting. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I, I, and obviously at first I would freeze. I think I'd do all four. Obviously, I freeze first. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do here? Then I fawn and I try and flirt a little bit. <laughs> And I'm like, you oh know, my God, you pick me like, out of everyone? what do you want? What do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> oh my God, you kidnapped me out of everybody? <laughs> oh my God, I feel so special. Um, I would definitely be a fauna. Like I would be like, what's it got to take <laughs> for me to get out of here? Or like not even just get out of here, like be like, we can With start you. a life together. Yeah, you Let's know? start a life together and like, run away. Like I'm all about it. Let's get out of here. Let's just run away. And then I would fight when I have the chance. And then piss and then bolt. I would piss bolt fly. Okay, yeah, we've got it sorted, everyone. That's what to do if someone ever kidnaps you. Okay, that was my first hypothetical okay, question for you. I do one. have a second one because okay. I saw a TikTok the other day about this, and it it brought up a great discussion with me and my friend. And the hypothetical question for you is: There's a coin. You've got a coin. You can either flip the coin mm-hmm. for a chance at one billion dollars, mm-hmm. or you can not flip the coin and just get a guaranteed $1 million. And my friend and I, we both had very different answers and then we discussed it and then okay. we both came to other answers as well. Okay. So I thought we could do this. So you've got a coin. I've got a coin right here, Brittany. You can flip this coin for a chance at $1 billion. If you get heads, you get the billion. If you get tails, you get absolutely nothing. I'm flipping the fucking coin for a billion. <laughs> I will take the fucking gamble. Yeah. 
come on, that's a one in two chance. Yeah. Like your chances are so high. 50-50. To 50, be 50 a billionaire. Chance. And I think as well, so at first, my friend was like, I'm taking the million. And I was like, I'm taking the flip a coin, right? Because my thing is, if I flip the coin and I don't get the billion, I'm still in the same position I am yes. today. But if I flip the coin and I end up with a billion dollars, like, A 50-50 chance good that? is really high. Also, the billion dollars is worth the risk to me because a million... I know this sounds sickening, but, like, it's not that much money. Like, I I know it's a lot of money, but in this economy, where's that going? You know what I mean? A two-bedroom apartment in uh, Western Sydney? Not Well, yeah, exactly. Not even. They're probably 1.1. You know what I mean? So, like, in this world, how long is that million? And I know we'd all love a million dollars. Don't get me wrong. absolutely. But I'm thinking about this strategically. Yeah. I'm thinking a million dollars really isn't going to get me far. I mean, obviously, I could live off it for a very long time. But if I actually want to buy things, imagine the billion. I think people forget how much more a billion is as well. The between a million and a billion is fucking... You can't even fathom it. No. Nah. I saw this really great analogy the other day to comprehend how much bigger a billion dollars is compared to a million. So, a million seconds, a million seconds in time mm-hmm. is 11 days. Wow. So, in 11 days, we would have counted a million seconds. A billion seconds... Is 31 years and seven months. Wow. Are you kidding me? 11 the days. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. A billion dollars is That's a lot. basically lo- half your fucking life. Right? So I think as well, I'm such a what if person. Um, and if I was to take the million, my the rest of my life would be thinking, what if I got the billion? Yeah, you'd live with a regret. Yeah. So I think I'd flip the coin as well. Me too. Well, that's not as interesting because, see, my friend said take the million straight away. I'm a fucking cash grabber. I'm fucking <laughs> going for the billion. What do you think my answer was going to be? Well, yeah, we, we actually discussed it because he was like, you should talk about this on the pod. And I was like, Brittany's going for the billion, surely. <laughs> <laughs> um, producer Ellie, what do you reckon? Are you taking the million or the billion? I'm going for the billion because I'm with you, Matt. Like, yeah, a million's good, but... I've still got to show up to work the next day. It's not really. I don't you can't really, really go like, quitting your job and like yeah. go woohoo. And you're still doing mortgage repayments and like it's not life changing, but the billion is. Do you know what's crazy to me though? Is <laughs> like that's how crazy this economy is for us to be sitting here going a million dollars. Like I know how crazy that sounds because I know a lot of people listening to this are going to go a million dollars would change my life and it would and it would. I'm going, but how much? Because 10, 15 years ago, sometimes I have to fathom how the amount of money has, like, changed I over know. the course of our lives. Because yeah. 10, 15 years ago, a million-dollar home was, like, the dream. You could buy a million-dollar mansion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, mansions start at $15 million. Like, it's, it's just, wild. like... So, yeah, million dollars to me. I mean, obviously, I'd hate to miss out of that if I landed on tails. But yeah, then what if you land on nothing? Then you're just full of regrets. Yeah, if, like if you landed on nothing and you didn't get the billion, would you then go fuck? I just should have taken the million and stop being so selfish. Yeah, but also there's no harm off my, you know, your life is still the same. Yeah, still in the same position. At least I haven't lost <laughs> you just said, a million. Yeah, like Ariana Grande. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so also I'm such a man- manifester, so. You know, yeah, you're still I manifesting, think I'd manifest winning the, the lotto. <laughs> yeah, I got to buy a ticket first, but yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Winning the lotto, bloody hell, wouldn't that be nice? Did you hear about the guy in South Australia that just won the hundred and fifty million? Oh, and he's the fir- the biggest lotto winner in all of Australia in the history. Oh yeah, he just won it, hundred and fifty milli. I think the two hundred million that went off a couple months ago, two people won that, so yeah. it's actually only a hundred. Wow, imagine that. And he went in and um, purchased the. I don't know if it was Powerball or Lotto, whatever, they're all the same. Um, he just purchased it on a whim when he was filling up his car at one of those ones where you can buy the fucking Lotto tickets at. Like, filled up his fuel and just bought a random ticket. Like, not even someone that's, like, religiously playing. Mm. And he won $150 million. See, that would fucking change your life. Which one of my family members is, like, a Lotto player and, like, every week will put the Thursday Powerball on and it costs $12.50 or whatever it might be. And every week for her, as long as I've known her, she has done that. I and wonder how much she would have saved if she'd put away $12.50 a week for those many years. Right? 
and I'm like, how much have you won? And she's like, <laughs> oh, I won $20 here and I won, I won, uh, won a, $36 a few years it's ago. A, it's a thrill of it, though. Yeah. It's the thrill of the... But with the lotto, I don't understand. Because with bingo, for example, you know, bingo is, I guess, gambling because you pay to go into it and then you win money if you win bingo. Bingo is fun because it's, like, fast and exciting. Yeah. 44, 36, 22. And, like, you're pressing the dot in the button. Like, I can see that people, like, the thrill of that is, like, There's what attracts people. To the, to the gambling, right? Mm. But like with Lotto, I cannot imagine sitting there with your Lotto ticket and the number because it's also so flat as well. Like for example, if you've got if the first number that comes out is fourteen and you don't have fourteen, you go, no, oh, well I've lost. Like do you know what I mean? Do There's you have no to excitement. Get them all? Yeah, to get like the hundred and fifty, he would have had to get every single number. Wow. Yeah. Slay to that guy. Hey, we were talking in the uh, main episode about rebranding because yep. we were talking about how I randomly became all right. Hey, Australia's Biggest Glamazon. I was going to say that with Australia's Biggest Glamazon, it's like you were asking, do I regret, you know, branding as Australia's Biggest gra- Glamazon? I or, or regret. I said, will you always have it? Oh, yeah, so true. Sorry, I think it's like because sometimes I do regret being like branding as Australia's Biggest Glamazon, mainly because of the makeup. Oh my god, putting on makeup is just the bane of my existence That's at the me moment. Every fucking Monday when I wake up <laughs> and I know that I have to put makeup on because I'm coming here and we're filming this shit. I know, but what do you got on? Like a little bit of foundation. <laughs> yeah, it's only like a ten minute makeup <laughs> yeah. job, but still Look, like I'm doing the whole I'm sticking diamantes on my yeah. face doll. You know what I mean? I got the brows, the the drag queen lashes, the lips, the glitter, the That's a lot. Oh my I god. Couldn't. I'm so glad that natural makeup has become a trend. I know, but natural makeup doesn't work for a glamazon, does it? <laughs> it could be Australia's natural glamazon. Yeah, you should Australia's <laughs> natural glamazon. glamazon. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it was working great for a while. Like I was all about it, mm. and uh, Australia's biggest glamazon was making me a lot of money <laughs> because you know. But now these days, I'm like, I can't. The thought of going to a Sorry, is this ungrateful? But when I get invited to like a premiere or something, the thought of getting dressed up in a dress, heels and makeup and lashes Why and doing you my do hair. like a dress and not, like still wear your outfit and then just do a real natural soft glam? Ah, uh, because I think what's the point? That's it's kind of like drinking alcohol. It's like, well, I'm not going out for one or two. I may as well have ten and get sloshed, <laughs> you know? Like, like what? if I'm not getting drunk, I may as well not drink. That's how I feel about makeup. If I'm not going full glam, I may as well not put anything on at all. It's just a waste of product. <laughs> You know? Yeah, okay. I thought maybe you could rebrand to the natural glow. <laughs> yeah. No. But you were asking, will there be a rebrand? I don't know. I feel like there's going to have to be at some point. Yeah. If I'm thinking logically, yeah. you're going to have to rebrand out of All Right Hay. I just think like Matt Hay is so boring. No, nah, it's not going to be Matt Hay. Yeah, I don't know what I'll rebrand to, but it'll be something. But anyway, you were talking about all these stores that you've seen rebranding. Yeah, I saw a guy on TikTok um, I didn't save his video or know his name, sorry, but credit to him. He's been, (laughs) what? If anyone's seen it, fucking let him know I'm giving him a shout out in the pod. Yeah, that'll help him out. He's been um, just doing some little videos of brands in Australia that have recently done rebrands. And Uh I thought I could show you their new logos. Oh, yes, please. Um, So the first brand that has done a rebrand is Michael Hill Jewelers. I have seen this one. Oh, so you've already seen I it. I don't know if I've seen the logo, but I've seen the stores. The stores now look almost like Pandora or um, like a stores. designer store. So before you go into Michael, Michael Hill, it was like not dark, but they you know, had like wood black walls. stores with like the purple, yeah. like spiky circle. That was their logo. Like I've got the logo here, but we all know it. It was just like Michael Hill with a light purple and dark purple sun looking thing above it. Mm-hmm. When you think Michael Hill, you think your 65-year-old mum or auntie going to buy a chunky locket bracelet. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, why did every mum have that? I don't know. Every mum when we were growing up had that gold bangle with the little love heart on with it. With like an amethyst in the yes. middle. Yes. <laughs> Why? And it was like a chunky gold chain. Yeah, Every with the safety chain on it as well because you didn't want to lose it. Necklace as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, now Michael Hill has done a rebrand. They're now Michael Hill Fine Jewelers. Oh. And everyone, I want you to look up the logo because I can't obviously show it on the pod. They've now got branding colours of like this soft, soft pastel-y, lime, limey lemon green. Mm-hmm. 
in a very simple logo, Michael Hill, fine jewellers. Wow. A very skinny font. And now it is giving... Designer. I want to go shop there. Yeah. And that just shows you the power. Like, I would never walk into a Michael Hill previously, but now... That I want to walk in there. Yeah, isn't isn't that amazing? I'm, like I'm looking at the logo; it's giving a designer store. Yes, like it's on par with some of the big brands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, wow. Okay, I approve of that rebrand, and obviously the stores themselves actually look incredible too. Like they've really, it's very modern, and I'm I have seen the upgrade to the stores themselves. So. I'm all about that. What else have you got for me? Well, the next one, it was a little while ago. Like, I think it might have been last year. It could have been fucking years ago with how fast the time goes. But the next one is the Cheesecake Shop. Okay. I didn't even know they rebranded. And it is so slay. Okay. So, we all know (laughs) the Cheesecake Shop for its iconic dark green and red with a bit of white. Like, we all know what the Cheesecake Shops look like. You go in there. It's giving outdated. It's giving gross. Yeah. Mind you, cheesecakes from the Cheesecake Shop are really fucking good. Oi, can I tell you? My post office, my local post office, there is a cheesecake shop next door. Yeah. And for starters, it is so, it smells so delicious every time I walk past. And there have been times where I have bought cheesecakes from, because you can get a quarter of a cheesecake. They cut them into quarters. And I think they're pretty reasonable for like a quarter. I can't remember how much they are. I think they might be $8.50, but they do deals as well towards the end of the day, because I'll go to get my post uh, my mail from the post office at let's say like four thirty, and you know they're closing soon, so they do deals on all the cheesecakes. I have often come home with like three cheesecakes for fifteen dollars or something. I love the cheesecakes and, and the cheesecake. Oh, shop. they're just delicious and you know all what? the flavors. AJ hates cheesecake, and I'm like, I hate people that oh, hate cheesecake. Put like, him in the bin. If you like cake, you like cheesecake. Like I think because it's called cheesecake, people get confused and think it's like cheesy or whatever. Mm. It's not. Anyway, back to the rebrand. We should go to the cheesecake shop, by we the way. We absolutely should. So okay, this so was the old, old logo. One. Yes. Okay. Which they, is still fun. I liked their old logo. Yeah. Also, it was like when, original. Like, when I was younger. Sorry. We'll get to the logo in a sec. But the cheesecake shop was like the penultimate treat for our family. My mother was like, oh. See, ours was Something's that. happening. It wasn't a birthday surprise all the like it wasn't like everyone got cakes. It was just like there's something happening, like a christening. Oh, we better get a cake from the cheesecake shop. <laughs> or like, you know, it had to be a milestone. Not a birthday or Christmas. Right, even more special occasion. It was like a real special, special occasion, and suddenly it was like, oh, we better get a cheesecake from the cheesecake <laughs> shop. Ours was that and the Viennetta ice cream. Yeah, and remember like, thinking Viennetta was the most expensive thing in the world? I thought it was like every slice was worth 50 bucks. It's not like, special for 440 the I other know, day. They're not special at all, but they are fucking delicious. Okay, anyway, back to the cheesecake shop. They've rebranded. They are, and again, I want you to all look this up because I can only explain it to a certain extent. <clears throat> They've kept green, but now... They've got a mint green mixed with a dark green and white. And it's giving very vintage ice cream shop. Okay, here we go. I'm about to see. Oh. I love it. Okay, fun. And it's very wait, modern. wait, wait. What's even more impressive than their actual logo is the rebrand of their stores. Oh. <gasps> Wow, it actually looks amazing. What I will say, though, is I feel that the Cheesecake Shop, unlike Michael Hill, the Cheesecake Shop is so iconic that I can almost see this hindering their... their Because it looks very, like, modern and clean and yeah. it's still kind of giving, like, old-school ice cream dairy it's, shop vibes. Yeah, it's very, um like, American diner shop, like, yeah. yeah. But my thing is, like, see, the Cheesecake Shop is so iconic that I think that, like, if you see a Cheesecake Shop, say, on the side of the road... You know it's a cheesecake shop, whereas yeah, that it's looks take... like a small business that has opened a cheesecake shop. Mm. So in a way, I'm like, is it beneficial or is it going to be hindering? We'll soon see as the years mm. unfold. But I think maybe that's the reason why they've done this rebrand is because maybe they were slowly going down and mm. then they've done a rebrand to kind of hike it back up. Also, that rebrand has not hit my cheesecake shop just yet because they still... I was only in there the other day getting a blueberry <laughs> cheesecake and a caramel cheesecake and a marble cheesecake. Sorry! 
Oh, sorry. There was just one day I didn't even have any mail, actually. I just thought to myself, you know what? I I think I deserve a cheesecake. And I was with Toby and Skylar and we all just went, who wants cheesecake? We all went and got one. And because they do cake as well, which is really good. Like actual cakes mud cakes as well. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, real moist vanilla mud cake we got as Ooh, well. Yum. Oh, just delicious. But you, the thing is you get a quarter. So it's really not that much. And then you split the quarter into thirds and then everyone gets a slice of the flav, each flavour. It's great. <laughs> Highly recommend. We are give, get, a, get a sponsorship. They've just done a rebrand, so they might not have any money. But, but <laughs> give us a sponsorship, Cheesecake Shop. All right. The next brand that has done a rebrand is Strand Bags. Okay. I'm very what interested we, for this. What do we think when we think of Strand Bags? We think my nan is going there to get a purse. Mm. That is what I think. Yeah. Or you're going there to just get Ugly a cheap, luggage. Yeah, a cheap suitcase. And you're thinking just clutter, mess, et cetera, et cetera. Apparently, they're really good to work for, though, Strand Bags. Oh, shout I, out. I think I've heard some glowing reviews from Strand Bags. There you go. Well, they were most known for their red and white um, logos originally. Quite simple. Like, they just had strand bags and then, I don't know at what point, but they introduced strand bags in an arch, which is pretty boring. Mm -hmm. And they have now rebranded and they've kept it really simple and now they are known as just strand. Oh. In all capitals, just in black with a white background. So, it's a bit more polished. It's a bit more... Sophisticated, chic. Yep. chic. Um, still basic, though, I will say. That's just a basic font. It is. But I'm thinking that if they've dropped the bags... Yeah, it's a bit more... Are we branching out, potentially? Who knows? Who knows? But that's their rebrand. Strand. Very interesting. I don't know if I like strand no. as a word because it reminds me of a strand of hair. Okay, yeah, like in, clogged in the drain in the shower, <laughs> strand. But that's their rebrand. I don't know if they've rebranded like their actual stores or whatever, but they've definitely got the new um, logo happening. And then, so the last one we've got is Typo. I didn't know Typo rebranded either. Yes. So Typo, as you all know, was known for its typewriter font Mm -hmm. on all the stores. You just know it when you see it. It's that typewriter font that's a bit inky and messy. Um, They also now have gone down the route of being more simple. And I don't know how I feel about it because I think it's lost its typo-ness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's just plain text again. Yeah. Hmm. Because as as outdated and chuggy as this typewriter font was, like it kind of goes like typo, like typewriter. Yeah. Like it really suited their stores and goes with like the bricks and like the whole theme that they've yeah. got going in, going in there. But again, they've gone for that clean, sleek, maybe they're wanting to become more elevated. Potentially. I, you know, I think typo is a bit underrated too. I mean... At the end of the day, I feel like perhaps it is just junk, but <laughs> it's cool junk. You know what I mean? Like they, I feel it's like it's good for gifts. Like if you don't know what yeah. to get someone, if you got to buy something for like your father-in-law or whatever, <laughs> like you go to fucking typo. I feel like in a typo, like I don't need any of this, but I kind of want it all. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I will say the one, the, my local one. I don't know if this is all typos, but my local one. We might just have a demographic that seems to feed into this, but. They have a whole wall, and I mean like a big, big wall. I'm talking hundreds. So you go, you walk in, there's the stationery, there's the fun things, and then you get to a certain part in the store, about halfway down the store, and the rest of the store is just noodle bowls. What? Just noodle bowls, like big, sorry, ramen bowls, like big bowls that look like a pot plant. I thought, oh, look at all the pot plants they've got. And then they're actually noodle bowls with like a little thing with chopsticks in it. And they've got all like Rick and Morty and the Simpsons and di- like, I don't know, all these different patterns on them and, and characters and stuff. But I was looking at it thinking, surely there's not this big of a market for ramen bowls. Like is ramen really, I ramen's know. Ramen's really popping off lately. There's know, all those but- new stores that are popping up as well where you go in and like fully make your own ramen. Have you seen? And there's like no. massive fridges and you go in and individually pick all of your ingredients. They're all in individual packets and then you sit down in the restaurant and you make it and eat it. I don't think I've ever actually had ramen. Neither. Yeah. We should go and have it then. T- do a taste test video. Please. Put it on the high scrollers TikTok that we don't run. I'll tell you what I do <laughs> love from uh, from Typo as well. I love their birthday cards. Okay. They do really good birth. I know birthday cards are fucking wasteful, um, but really like funny 
Iconic birthday cards. Well, I don't think birthday cards are wasteful because I get my birthday cards from Costco. And they've got this big pack with like 30 cards in them. Mm. And the cards are so beautiful and mm. 3D as well. Like, yes, I know they're just a waste at the end of the day. But like, for example, my friend who works at a cafe and is like obsessed with coffee and blah, blah, blah. I, this box that I got had in it a card that was like a a 3D scene of like a barista at a cafe and I don't know, it was all fun. And I gave it to him and I'm like, I got you this card. Like I chose this one for you because like, surely you're putting that on display in your bedroom. It is the most (laughs) stunning birthday card I've ever seen. And he's like, I absolutely will be. Don't know if he is. I was at his house the other day. I didn't see it. But anyway, um, (laughs) there was another one that was like, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) He was just pretending to be nice. Yeah. There was another one that was like the Disneyland castle. And like, that's perfect for my sister because she loves Disney stuff. So like, I think if you get the right cards, mm. like those $1 cards you see in the hot dollar store, like everyone's throwing those out. But, <laughs> but like if you get a nice birthday card, maybe that's Keep a it. niche business you could start. Quality, high quality, high end birthday cards. Imagine selling a birthday card. I think I've seen ones. There's already good businesses out there that you can um, then uh, put in your plants in the dirt and it will grow a little tree. No. <laughs> so... Someone's already doing it. Uh, everything can be a tree these days. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> plant me, see what happens. You're gonna. When are you going to rebrand fate at all, if ever? I don't know if we would do a rebrand, but I think the reason why I don't feel like we would ever need to is because our branding is so simple to begin mm. with. Like, the only thing we'd be changing is the fucking font. Yeah. And we already did that once. We had one font that was all capitals. Now it's all lowercase. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. did too. But I don't feel like we need to do a rebrand unless we wanted to become a completely different style of brand. Like if because we're so like basics and whatever, basic logo, basic styles, or your capsule wardrobe pieces. The only time I think we would need to do a rebrand is if we fully wanted to change our style of our brand. Like if we wanted to all of a sudden do printed caftans and stuff, then maybe we'd do a rebrand. Mm. But for now, I think we're in a really safe zone. Basics and basic bitch logo. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. God, we talked for a long time on this uh, Close Friends episode. I, this Thanks. Is, I feel like this is a little bit longer of an episode, so you're welcome to all of you that always say, longer episodes, please. Yeah. I mean, I could keep talking for another hour and a half if we're allowed to, but someone's, not allowed. someone's got big business to record. Your other bloody podcast, the one you're cheating on me with. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for Close Friends, Matt. Um, Cool. <laughs> I forget how we end this. We just say thanks for listening and... See you all at the Cheesecake Shop. <laughs> yeah. What stays at the Cheesecake Shop happens at the... Che- no, what the fuck? Yeah. Anyway, get over it next. What stays... <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.